Alright guys, I have a super exciting video for today. A little bit on the side of bad news first. If you follow my Facebook or Instagram page, you might know already. The front drive shaft on my WK decided to fail at the joint where it meets the transfer case. I had a little bit of a mishap there, had to have the vehicle towed home, and I wasn't able to fix it in time, so I'm up seven hours north at college without the Jeep, and it's pretty rough. Moving forward from the bad news, I would like to give a huge welcome to Impulse Fabrications as a sponsor to my Jeep story. It is awesome having them a part of the team. I'm excited to make more videos for Impulse Fabrications. I have one of their awesome products here today that is just super well thought out, seemingly like how they do everything. And I think that unless you have an SRT8 WK or if you have one of those Overland WKs, the stock WK grill kind of leaves a little bit to be desired. It's pretty boring. So what we have today is Impulse Fabrications custom grill insert. It is perfectly cut to fit inside of this Jeep's grill. I'm gonna show you exactly how to install this. It's super easy, very worth the price, and it will give a huge difference in the appearance of your WK for the better. Before I left, I filmed the removal of this, so I'll get to that now, and then I'll move forward to back seven hours north of here, and I'll get to installing the actual grill insert and taking this thing apart. Go ahead and pop your hood underneath on the top of the grill. You will see that there are a bunch of these push pins. You just have to take a flathead screwdriver or a pin removal tool. I know they make those. With the grill removed from the car, we're gonna flip it over. And on the back side, we're gonna see that there are clips that run the entire length of the grill. We're gonna go ahead and carefully remove these clips, separating the two pieces here that make up the entire grill. We wanna do that so that we can access uh, the inner part. And in doing so, we wanna be super careful not to mess with any of these clips. It's what actually keeps the grill from sitting normally. So if you're in a colder location like me, plastic is more brittle. Be super careful, especially when using a screwdriver. When you're doing this, you'll usually hear a positive click like that. When you get the clip undone, just keep doing that across all of them and it should come off fairly easily. Like I said, just take your time. Now that we have the two pieces separated, you can go ahead and move this piece to a safer location. You don't want to get scratched up. So the first thing you'll notice is that these are obviously gonna get in the way, these little vertical slits here. So we're gonna go ahead and remove those. You can do that with a Dremel or you can even do it with hand snips, which I'm gonna do here. Once you're done, you'll have a pile of these little plastic inserts. But on the grill, you'll have these little ridges that are left over from cutting them. We are going to sand those smooth. This is plastic, so just about any coarse grid is gonna make quick work of this. To get most of the material out of the way, you can take your hand steps once again and cut them in a different direction. And that will take off a big chunk of the nipples that have left over after you cut out the slits. Next up, take your sandpaper. And in my case, I got 180 grit. I got this grit just because it's a coarse grit, but it's not too coarse to where it's gonna be gouging the plastic uncontrollably. I have everything sanded smoothly, so I'm just gonna flip it over. Last thing before we go ahead and mock up the grill insert, we're gonna remove these nipples that run the entire length of all these vertical slits here. Impulse Fab's grill insert is made of a high grade aluminum, so there's no worries about it rusting whatsoever. It is recommended though that you do shoot it with some paint, but it does come 100% prepared for paint. The only thing that is required is that you wipe it down with a solvent first or a prep spray or wipe or anything along those lines, just to make sure that there's no oils or anything on the metal. And I also recommend hitting it with a self etching primer because it is bare aluminum and you wanna get the best adhesion when you're doing things like that. If you were ever considering putting as much time and effort as you could into anything in your entire life, let it be this in getting this perfectly straight and even among the entire grill. You don't want the front of your vehicle showing off your brand new grill insert and having it lopsided. So what I have here is a roll of masking tape and I'm going to mock this up into place behind the grill of course. And what I can do from there is start marking locations where I'm going to be drilling for it to be able to mount to. One thing that's helping me get this right is I know that this is perfectly in the middle. It's a clip that holds on the outer piece of the grill. And obviously this is perfectly in the middle of the grill insert. 
So I'm trying to line this up perfectly with that. And once I kind of get a feel for the orientation here and what's gonna look right, I'm going to go ahead and flip it around and stick some tape on it. When you're aligning this and getting ready to put tape on it so that you can mark the holes, you wanna focus more on the side to side adjustment, making sure that it's even, you know, uh, you know, side to side there. The reason being is because if you're worried about it in the vertical direction, these holes are actually ovals, which is a great feature of these, so you don't have to really worry about, you know, is it too far up or too far down, which didn't actually jump out at me right away as to which one is more correct, because you can push it down here and it could be lined up there, or it can kind of, you know, go down there and there's a gap there. But like I said, it doesn't really matter because these holes are engineered to have some adjustment in them, which is a really great feature. I have tape marking the center lines and I have tape marking the sides there. You can be very precise here and potentially measure, you know, the, the halfway point between there and there, the halfway point, you know, between here using a caliper or something like that, if that's, you know, of interest to you. But I, I know that this will come out just fine the way I'm doing it. So I flipped it over again. Everything looks good on this side. Looks even from that side to that side. The center clip here looks like it's even with the center of the grill insert there. So I'm gonna flip it over a third time, measure a third time, you know, measure as many times before you cut, or in this case, drill. I'm going to mark where I'm going to drill the holes, remove the grill insert, and then I'm gonna go from there and use a quarter inch drill bit to drill where I'm going to put the mounting hardware. If you're getting some movement in the grill insert, which I am, and I wanna make sure that it's perfect before I go ahead and drill, you can take a longer piece of tape like this, go in from the front and kind of finagle it through and pull up like this so it stays stout against the actual grill. And that way you'll be able to get a more accurate mark as to where you're gonna drill. Do not be afraid to go heavy on the tape here. You wanna make sure that your measurements are exact when you do this. You might be tempted from here to just stick the drill bit through that hole and start drilling out the holes that you need to do across the top of the grill insert. I promise you that is not the right way to do this. You want this to be an accurate measure. Not only is aluminum a very soft metal and you will probably gouge it with a drill bit made for drilling, but you will also potentially risk moving the grill insert and then once again you will risk the chance of having an uneven grill insert. I promise you, you don't want that. It'll annoy you. It's the front of the Jeep. It's the first thing everyone sees. So make sure you do this right. Going against everything I just said because I told you to not do this and to mark where you're going to put a hole, I just realized that at college I have zero access to any of my silver Sharpies that I would have at home for marking this kind of thing. So for the sake of the video only, and please, please mark this at home or be very accurate when you're doing this like I am, Take a smaller pilot drill bit, very, very small, and you're going to apply pressure to the middle only, and you're going to put it directly in the middle of the oval, and you're gonna drill through it. I have all my pilot holes drilled out. I have the grill insert removed. I have the tape removed, and now I have the one quarter inch drill bit in here. I'm gonna finish out drilling the rest of the holes. I have it flipped over again, and I wanna make sure that the grill insert sits as flush as possible against the inside of the grill. So I'm gonna go ahead and take some sandpaper and sand the inside of where I just drilled through. Before we go on to the last step and install the grill insert, I'd like to appreciate the fact that Impulse Fabrication went out of their way to make sure that their hardware is the same exact material as their grill insert. So you're not gonna have two different materials here corroding. You know, you're not gonna have seized bolts after a while. It's a really, really good system and they paid a lot of attention to detail here. All the holes are drilled, everything is sanded smooth. We made sure that the grill insert is lined up perfectly in the center and we made sure that it sits perfectly flush against the inside of this piece right here. We can go ahead and start moving on to installing the actual grill insert. So we're gonna take our hardware and we're going to put a washer that's included and it's gonna go in the orientation like this. So it's gonna go inwards towards the radiator, you know, if the radiator was behind it and then you're going to put the grill insert in and then the nut behind it. All right guys, we have the bolts through, we have the nuts on partially, everything lined up and worked out perfectly, so we're just gonna tighten them down and we're gonna go ahead and put the grill assembly back together. Remember, your hardware is aluminum, so you don't wanna over tighten it and risk bending the threads. The whole point of it is so that you can have a corrosion free setup and if you bend the threads, you're not gonna get the nuts off anyway. You're gonna ruin the bolts. So just make sure that you don't over tighten it. They are locking nuts so you don't have anything to worry about. It's not gonna vibrate loose and you'll be all set to go. All right guys, we did it. It's installed, it looks great. It's on there sturdy, it is not moving. I'm really happy about that. 
It came out perfect. It's lined up just the way I had it with the tape. The only thing left to do is to fit the front part of the grill on, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. All right guys, and there we have it. That is the end of the video. We have the grill insert installed. It looks great. It adds a very custom touch to your front end, and it definitely stands you out of the crowd of the typical WK little slots that really don't look like anything impressive at all. Like I said, if you have anything but the SRT8 or the Overland Jeep WKs, you really aren't rocking anything special there. So uh, I highly recommend checking out Impulse Fabrication. They are always coming up with new designs on new things and not only liking their Facebook page, which I will have in the description below, but try following it because they're constantly posting ideas and uh, you know new CAD designs, things like that. And they're always looking for user input. So if you're someone who likes to give input for you know, a growing platform or a growing community like the WK, the WK2, XK, I definitely recommend doing that, giving them a follow. And shoot them a message if you have any concerns or if you would like to see anything else, they're always open to suggestions. Like I said in the beginning, I am super happy to have them a part of my Jeep story. Thanks again for watching tonight's video. I need to go run back to New Jersey and fix my Jeep. One last thing, going back to the vertical height adjustment, I have these set all the way up and I should have test fitted it a little bit more before because you'll see there's a small gap down there, but that will definitely go away once I push these uh, down in the oval holes that come with it. Super happy they provided that because I didn't really uh, pay much mind to that when I was putting this together. I will fix this when I go ahead and repaint it. I would do it now, but like I said, I have to get back to New Jersey, get my Jeep back on the road. I need that thing, I miss it. But uh, thanks again for watching. Thank you.